Welcome to the Sports Arena, your front row ticket to the best in sports talk and entertainment. Great analysis, top name guests, and news you can use from the sports landscape. So take your seats, sit back, and relax. As you, you are, are now in the Sports Arena. arena. You know what you're capable of. I like this kind of Fix it. You bet you I want it. And here's your host, Eric Wilson. I'm like, all right, let's go. I get, we get lost. I'm like, I need a minute. <laughs> Neglect myself. What's going on, everybody? Your man, Eric Wilson, here for the Sports Arena. And let me just say, the two ladies that I'm bringing on, whenever I get the opportunity to sit down and have a conversation with them, it is just such an overwhelming feeling. I was given the honor and privilege last season when they were here in Bradenton, Florida, in the Wubble, and I love talking to them. I mean, it could be about basketball. It could be about life. It could be about their dogs. It doesn't matter. They are probably one of my favorite couples in the world, so... Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, Courtney Vandersloot, Allie Quigley. Y'all know him as the Vander Quigs. Ladies, thank you so much for joining me here on the Sports Arena. How are you, first and foremost? We're good. Very good. Yeah. And the feeling is likewise. Yeah. It's thank you. Yeah. <laughs> thank you so much. So listen, I know you ladies, the season has started and a great game on Saturday. I loved what you ladies were able to do. Um, Allie, I just got to ask you, how are you feeling? I, I know that you will not be playing um, against the dream. How's the hamstring? Getting better every day, but it's just one of those things I've learned over the last couple of weeks that, you know, even if it's feeling a little bit better, I just have to be patient and do its work, let, let the body heal itself. So um, I'm going to just take my time with it because it's early in the season and there's a lot, a lot of season left, especially with the Olympic break. So um, we're confident in our roster and, you know, that's what we're going to do right now. And that's amazing. And I have to ask the two of you because you ladies do not take a day off. You left last season you went overseas. I mean, I'm sure you had even more restrictions with, with COVID and everything going on, but you were in the Euro Women's League. Congratulations to all your success. Then you jumped back on a plane, and now you're back here, and you're playing with the sky. So, I mean, I thought I was a workaholic, but then I met the two of you. Court, tell me, you know, how do you ladies con stay consistent with all of this? Uh, well, it's a grind for sure, but it's really all we've known since we've been in the WNBA. Um, we, we've gone overseas every single year. Um, we see it as a blessing. It's, it's just an incredible opportunity for to be able to travel the world and, you know, make make really good money playing basketball in, in Europe and in other countries and then come back here and play in the best league in the world. So, you know, it's a grind and it, and it's, it definitely takes its toll, but we absolutely adore our jobs. We love what we do. And so, you know, we get to do it together. We're really lucky to have that. Um, and so, you know, it, it, it's a fun experience for us. Yeah. And that was what I was going to say. You ladies are in a very unique situation because you, you work together, you live together, you play together. And yet whenever I talk to you, there's always this great sense of just the two of you moving forward together as one. And that is such just a humongous thing, you know, especially with how the world is. Let's call it what it is. Um, it's just so refreshing and so genuine to see the two of y'all together because I don't know if I could do it. I'm going to be very real with y'all. I don't know. Me and my wife, we have our differences. I don't know if I could live and work and play every single day with her, but y'all complement each other so well. And to me, I got to know what's the secret. One of y'all got to give me the secret to it. <laughs> I think it's a calm, calmness and when I need a fire under my butt she lights it when she needs to just relax a little i help her relax and i think that's kind of what's worked for us and um yeah i mean we've just like I, like courtney said we just look at it as a blessing so uh we just try to enjoy whether we're in russia or chicago seattle on a road trip in europe like just try to make the best of it and uh, we're just lucky, really lucky. And we're, and we're also just so similar in the things that, you know, are important to us. And so everything kind of just blends really well. You know, when we first started this journey together, it was all about like our careers and it just blended really well. And, so, and you know, we've changed, we've turned that into, you know, our, our life outside of basketball, our family life and things like that. And so, you know, it, it just kind of a, it is about balance, it's, but it's a balance that we, you know, we worked we've worked hard over the years to, to make sure right. that we perfect it. Yeah. And, and I'm glad you brought that up court because I want to ask you ladies about that with this being the 25th season of the WNBA, there has been a lot of talk about expansion. 
there has been a lot of talk about, you know, there are a lot of talented athletes, female athletes out there who are currently not on a WNBA roster. They're not a part of the 144. In, in your ladies' mind, how do you think the league is going to make that adjustment if they are at all? But can you talk to me about, do you know if there's going to be any type of expansion? Because the people want it, you know? Those who weren't yeah. fans before are, are, are becoming or are fans. Now. I mean... I mean, I want it too. I think we all want it. We all want to go to every major city and have a WNBA team, but it's just, it's a process. It's baby steps. I would personally like, like to see actually 144 players in the WNBA because with the way the rosters are these days, most teams have 11. So when you do the math, it's not 144 mm -hmm. and even 11 is hard to play with. You have one person go down or one overseas commitment or anything that happens, you're down to 10, nine. So I'd like to see us get to 13 players back to that. I feel like when I came in the league, we had 13 players. Two were always um, on IR, kind of like the NBA and maybe other leagues that are more established. So I would kind of rather have that first, but obviously make our way to more cities and more markets. And I think to like really emphasize and to, for people to really understand, we're still such a new league. You know, 25 years is if you look at the other leagues, it's, it's you know, it's still so new. And I think the league it wants to do their due diligence and make sure that this is something not just uh, a quick fix or something that they that re really want to sustain and have this league for 50, 150 years more. You know, we want the future women, girls, basketball players to have a league to come to and we don't want to outdo it yet, you know? And I get you on that, but let's, let, let's be realistic here for a second, okay? This league started 25 years ago, 1996, all right? I, I had just come out of college and I had heard of what they were calling at the time the sister league of the NBA. But you ladies have have really paved the way and, and not just the two of you, but others who have come before you. You know, we just saw Simone Gustis that she just retired and there was real no big media attention around the fact that this was a woman who was a part of the start of, you know, the WNBA and making an impact. But yet we didn't honor her or we did not give her her flowers if you will so yeah. I, I i look at the 25 years especially after what went down last year and how the entire organization said yes we are in a global pandemic and yes there are social injustices going on but we are going to use our platform not only to entertain but also to educate if that doesn't resonate with someone then i'm sorry you're basically living under a rock because the WNBA has taken stances that other teams have then followed. I've been watching the NBA playoffs, and I don't think I've seen one gentleman not wearing a WNBA 25 shirt in support of what you ladies do. So I agree with you. You have to do your due diligence. But I also feel like the WNBA has pushed the envelope and said, we will not sit down. We will not be quiet. We need to be and will be heard. That's why I'm saying there has to be more. The powers yeah. that be, the decision makers, there has to be more because you're at a, you're at a crucial point right now. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, we you. agree. Yeah, yeah. You're preaching the choir here. I mean, absolutely. Like we, we are on the same page. We agree. We want this. We all want the same things. Um, you know, we're going to continue to push WNBA and, and people are going to fall in love. They, they, they will. We just got to get yeah. it out there more. We just need more owners. We need more yeah. people with the money to be, okay, I want a WNBA team in Miami. I want a WNBA team back in, back in Houston. Like you need people with the money to yeah. Yeah. want it. Like people got to step up. Listen, bring one to Tampa. So you're closer to me. That way I can at least come see y'all when you come and play. I mean, listen, I'll go Tampa. I'll go Orlando. If I have to drive to Miami to see you, I will make it happen. But uh, right now where you're at is probably the closest place to me. And that's Atlanta. I want to ask y'all each one more thing before I let you go. And as always, I thank you so much for taking your time to join me here on the sports arena. Alia, I'll go with you first. Uh, you know, this has been a ride and kind of a full circle for you. You in your younger days played with Candace Parker, who is now back with the team. And well, I'm sorry, who is now back with you, not with the team, who is back with you. Can you talk to me about the connection that you and Candace still have 
and just the impact of having someone who you are familiar with, not just Courtney, but you're also familiar with her style of play, how that just makes this team so much better. Yeah, I think when anyone grows up in like a similar area, we probably grew up 20, 30 minutes from each other. Uh, you just share a similar background in terms of just how you grew up, like, you know, whether it's similar restaurants or going to the AU tourn tournaments on the weekend, similar just people being around. Uh, we have that connection. And I think going back to what you said, we played in Turkey a couple of years back. That was my only chance to actually play alongside her as a teammate. So um, it's nice to have that familiarity and obviously knowing her as a player since she was 13 years old. Um, I know her game, like she knows mine. We respect each other. She, you know, knows the game so well, obviously being on TNT and just she loves she loves basketball. She eats, sleeps, and breathes it. So to be around a player that just has such a high IQ and um, just such a good leader, decision maker, it just makes everything so easy. So uh, it's been awesome to be able to have her come back to Chicago, back home, and, you know, kind of finish where she started. Yeah. And, and, and Courtney, I, I have to ask you this because there is such high praise for you when it comes to not only being the leader of this team, but just being an individual individual who has just made such a name for herself in the WNBA. You're a facilitator. You're a floor general. James calls you the head of the snake. When you have this group of women around you, you add in a Candace Parker, you bring back in a stew. You just signed on Natasha Mack um, because, you know, Stephanie Dolson is qualifying for the Olympics. Court, how do you do it? I mean, I don't know. That's like the one thing I have going for me, I guess. Um, you have a it, lot going for you. Let me just say that. Right. You have a lot going for you. I, meant like, I, don't, I don't know. That That's just kind of like what got me here, you God know? given. Yeah, it's just like something that has come a little bit more natural for me, unlike some of the other things like I've had to work for, you know, just, you know, like shooting and scoring. That Those, things, those are the things I really have to work with or work for. But you know, like being the floor general, and it's just something I've done my whole life. I've, I've, I've been in that position. I've the the vision I kind of had. I've just always had, and so it's come a little bit na more natural for me. So when I'm playing on instincts, those are the things that just they just happen. Um, you know, I've been fortunate. This roster makes it very easy. You know, which is, uh, you know, such a blessing for me. I've always, I always, this is like a dream for a point guard. You know, playing with. People, you, we have shooters, we have speed, we have athleticism, we have IQ, we have uh, girth, <laughs> I guess, you know. Um, you know, we I, we do really do have it all. And, um, you know, it's 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 special. I enjoy playing with these girls and, you know, they, they make me better and I try to do my best to make them better. So it really works well with, with the package that I have. I mean, that's amazing. Listen, I'm, I know, I always tell James this, I'm like, listen, I know, you don't have high expectations because James, much like all of you, you're in the moment. All right. You don't let one game, you don't overlook anything. You treat every day the same. It's like, okay, we're here. This is what we're going to do now. And then we're going to move on. We're not going to forecast anything. We're going to stay in this moment and be present in this moment. And I think that's the one thing, but as someone on the outside, as someone who has watched, I know there is a high level of expectation. I just want y'all to win. That's my whole thing. I, I want to come to Chicago and celebrate with y'all when y'all get your championship because that's what I want. Um, and I, I believe that last season when I first became a fan and now looking at it this season, there's such a camaraderie amongst the ladies of the WNBA that it's crazy to really take a time capsule and say, okay, 25 years ago when this started, who would have thought? But looking at where it's at now, I foresee only great things. And I hope and pray that that is what happens. Ladies, thank you so much as always. Best of luck tomorrow against the dream um, and, and beyond. I know you have a home stance coming up after that where you know, you've know you got LA coming to town and I believe you're gonna see Phoenix and you're gonna see some other teams. The Commissioner's Cup, I'm rooting for y'all to get that half mil. Let me just say, that's, that's gonna be true. something nice to, to get into everybody's pocket. And yep. as Diamond told me on media day, if you weren't excited about that, then I don't know what you're playing for. I was like, all right, <laughs> fair enough. Ladies. Well, she said that. Yep. She did. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you.
And I will talk to y'all really soon. Thanks for having us. Appreciate it. it. See ya. Always.